This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason Glick. What's going on? Well, things are still kind of crazy and terrible in the outside world. It's like with all the social distancing and pandemic fears and all. It kind of just makes you want to feel like, hey, you know, I'm just going to chuck all this, like, um, like life on the, uh, it's like living on a continent and just, like, go out to the, um, go out and live on an island somewhere. Right, John? Yep. Yeah. Well, it's like that's that's kind of like the whole whole drive behind this um, this particular podcast because this is a series that I've been reading um, behind the scenes, such such as it is after writing up the two, first two volumes a couple of years back. But this is um, Barakamon by um, Satsuki Yoshino, and it's all about living living on an island out in the boonies, it's like of of Japan, such as it is the go the Goto Islands as the uh, as the series calls it, and even though it's, you know, it's like it's a series about about a, uh, a high-strung city, um, like city boy, a calligrapher named um, Seishu Honda, who I like, has, has to go out and live in like the, it's like like in, it's like in the rural, it's like in the rural island life of Japan. Well, this is basically Japan's equivalent of like like a, an American story that you see pop up time to time from. It's like in TV, books, and film. It's like about the, uh, it's like about the city, like about the well-heeled city slicker who goes who goes out to the country. It's like to, like, to, like to, sl- to uh, find out what what really what really matters to him in life. Him, well, usually him, but sometimes sir, but usually him. It's like, and um, how it's like how he can just like get back in touch with his roots, with his roots and all. It's like learning to slow down and appreciate appreciate life and all that kind of thing. Well, Barakamon. It's like is is Japan's answer to that, and it's eighteen volumes, and even though it's like I haven't been writing it up uh, much, it's been something I've been thoroughly enjoying because, well, when I do, whenever I did get around to buying it, I always buy it in chunks, like three to four volumes, volumes at a time, and it's like and it's it's like and after getting and even though like the final volume came out last year, it's like you know I had other stuff that I wanted to talk about ahead. And I mean, I always thought, hey, you know, it's like I kind of like to talk about Barack, Barack Obama, but oh man, it's like we've got like, it's like the, like the finale of like like the wicked, the wicked and the divine. It's like and it's like a House of X, Powers of X to talk about. It's like oh man, there's so much so much stuff that I, that like demands we talk about right now. Well, now that we're it's like you know still still in the midst of a pandemic, it's like and um it's like and my reading list like, has been like drastically shortened because of stuff. Um, I realized, hey, you know, it's like now is a good time to talk about it. In fact, it's a better time to talk about it because God knows that I, I think a lot of us would like to make like um, Seishu Honda does in this series and and have and have to pack up and just head out and head out to an to an isolated island somewhere away from it's like all this all this plague talk and all the all the uh, ills that are affecting like main mainstream life and all oh, good lord yes but you know i think we could all do without the without the um the inciting incident that causes um Han- the causes um honda to um duck out of duck out of life because as i mentioned like he's a calligrapher and this is a very very high-end refined profession and at his latest like and there's this competition where he it's like where he, where he's uh the series starts off like where where honda has like you know just He's gone through his latest competition, and um, even though he's been given an award, it's like, well, the uh, like the, the the gallery, the guy at the gallery basically comes up and says, like, yeah, you know, it's like your calligraphy is quite quite frankly kind of boring, really. And well, Honda, you know, like rather than just like offer like you know reasoned like reasoned dialogue to to uh, refute this this um, this older gentleman's assertions, well, Honda just freaks out, just punches. Puts this guy, this guy's ass out, which is kind of like, oh man, this is this is a bad look for someone who, like who, like for an up and comer, like not just an up and comer, but he's also like the son of a of a even more distinguished um calligrapher, um Seime Honda. So, um, with uh, with imminent dis- like, disgrace, like um, it's like um, um like I'm being, I'm um, being visited on him. Seime recommends that hey, you know. Why don't you go out to um this, like go out to this this goes out to the Goto Island region where this is this is a place where I, um like spent some time in my youth. It's like when I was like when I was your age and like I found myself at an impasse as just my career. 
Now, now, now I'm say she agrees, but you know, it's like he's a uh, city, he's a city boy, born born and bred, and so when he shows, when he like arrives, like it, like in this, in what is like, in this like backwater region of Japan, this is the place where, well, where um, where they still they still got dial up phones, they still got um out like um squatter toilets, it's like and. It's like, and if you're like thinking about like like internet ac- internet access, well, yeah, that they do have that, but you know, it's like, if you're, but um, it's like, but o- but only just really. It's like, and it's like as far as like you know, everyone having cell phones, nah, nope. It's like, and then, the, but as far as like any kind of like uh like um, shopping center, nope. They just got their local general general store. It is it is rustic as fuck to be honest. So. So um, a lot of so uh, so a lot of the, the, the series I mean, initially basically focuses on like you know Honda um, like getting a, getting acquainted to um, this this rustic island life, but he's also um, got it's like got, got kind of like, a, like got, got some help in that in the sense that there is a, a local girl um, Naru who um, who is like an who is just like an exuberant um, ball ball of energy. Both entertaining and exasperating in equal measure, which it's which I'm not saying like the exasperating thing is necessarily a bad thing because she because you know she's eight years old. I mean like like eight years how many eight year eight year olds do you know that like aren't like exasperating in their in their own way? So it's like she she takes an immediate liking liking to Honda. It's like and like and even though it's like. I kind of just initially kind of resents resents her presence. It's like, like, what is this kid doing here? It's like, I'm not really a kid person. It's like, and wh- why is she just like, how did she, how did she keep finding her way into my, it's like, it's like into my um, rustic shack without, even though I keep locking the door. It's like that, that kind of, it's that, they got that kind of relation, relationship going, going in the, it's like in the early days. It's like, and for a lot of, um, for a good portion of um, Barack Mon's link, it does feel it has this kind of sitcom feel in the sense that, well, you know, it's like what kind of thing is some um, Honda going to get used to today? It's like, is it gonna it's like is going to be the toilets? Is it going to be the uh, the phones? Is it going to be the fact that he's become that after Naru takes the liking to him, all the other kids basically like realize that hey, you know, this city slicker is not so bad. Let's go and have fun at his place. Let's just go keep crashing his place. So you've got got like little kids like. Um, like Hina, who's like the um, really really high maintenance um, friend friend of Naru, who just cry at a drop of a hat. Um, there's Kenta, who's like the uh, who's kind of like it's like who's like the, who's the boy who kind of like kind of likes Naru, but you know is is very like childish about it. There's um, Miwa, the son of the uh, lo- um, local liquor owner, who is just like it's like who's just like extremely forth forthright. It's like a, about think about talk, talking to Honda, or it's like and her and her friend um, Tama. Who is an aspiring manga artist who all has all these Fujoshi, like i.e. she loves yaoi manga and keeps um fitting um Honda and some of the other islanders in it's like into her fantasies, it's like um her that kind of thing. And there's um Hiroshi who, even though he's um he's a he's a dyed blonde um high schooler, well he's he's basically just really kind of ordinary aside from that, just because like he kind of goes through life half half assed, not not. Not making like a whole lot of like effort, or it's like um, do do one particular thing. And then there's also like you know village headmaster who's like Hiroshi, Hiroshi's dad. And he's a good, like like he's like your average. He's just your average like you know, it's like it's like de- decent guy who's always willing willing to help out and just like let Honda know what's up and all. It's like and then it's like I'm Yasuba the, uh, it's like one of the old, it's like one of the older members of the. It's like it's like of the village who's also like really good at like um hunting for hunt, like hunting for squid and all. It's like and then there's um Mush Higashino, like the aspiring um farmer who may have a uh, hidden connection with Honda back back in the day, but like is that is but is um but maybe um like developing some kind of resentment from him because like originally like Honda was supposed to get the uh, he was supposed to get the uh, room that um Honda eventually um wound up taking. It's like it's like on the island. So there's so there's like an interesting like um like um quirky bunch of it's like bunch of characters like in it's like in this series initially and and for the first couple of volumes it's like it's it's like even though it's like it's got this kind of this, it has this kind of formula in the sense that you know Honda 
finds himself getting used to like particular bits about it's like island life. It's like whether it's whether it's survi- surviving a typhoon. It's like or going. It's like or going fishing. It's like or going fishing. Like learning how to cat catch his um his, his daily meal. It's like or just like looking after the kids and what crazy adventures they're getting up to. It's like Barakamon has this like does have a kind of like charming um slice of life feel to it. It's like it's like in the sense that you know it's like even though it's like it's that the series initially feels kind of like kind of one joke one note joke in the sense that oh it's like if Tonda is kind of being is going to be trolled for this chapter well Yoshino like does at least finds new ways for him to be trolled it's like in, in exposing him to different aspects of it's like of of, uh, of island life and even then there's some there's some points where um Honda where Honda um you know actually like you know isn't um being being the the troller, he kind of winds up being the trolley. No, wait, I got that wrong. He wants, doesn't want it being the trolley. He winds up being the troller. So just when the uh, headmaster of the uh, it's like of like Nar- of Naru's class, like he's just kind of like, oh man, like, I can't, can't like figure out how to do this like unicycle type thing. And then Honda's like, oh yeah, this is actually not. Hey, this is actually pretty easy. And it's like, <laughs> and it just pisses the headmaster off. I don't know why that that particular thing just stuck in my head, but um. It's like that, but it does, and it's an example of the fact that you know it's like it's not like I said it's even though like it's kind of like a one note setup. Um, Yoshino finds like interesting ways to uh, it's like you know to like to vary the uh, it's like the approach like over like as like as the series goes on, like and and the thing is like there's not really a the series doesn't really have a lot of um I have one ongoing story to it, even though there are certain points where we um learn about. Where like it, where like a uh, where an ongoing plot does take over, such as when um, like uh, Honda's friend Kao Fuji and um, Kel- Project Prodigy um, like um, Koshiro um, show up to uh, like try and get him get him back to the um, to the mainland, and um, that that doesn't work. But then um, eventually like um, Honda's dad Seime and his like and his wife. It's like and um his um cr- cross dressing um business manager um Kyrie, um show up to like try and bring bring him back to the to the island um much later in like um probably at the halfway point point of the series. I mean, th- like what basically what the if the series does have like a one ongoing thread to it, it's the sense of like you know well it's like is Honda going to go back to the uh, to the mainland, and well it's like uh, I. Kind of want to. I kind of want to spoil that because it's because it's kind of key to the uh, it's like to, to the overall to the overall story. It's like, but even if it in the end, it's like like there's not really like a that the the, uh, the fact that you know it like is Honda going to um come return to the uh, mainland? That's not really like the the driving point of the series. This is all about um Honda. Um, just trying to find out you know what does he want to do, and um. About three, about three quarters of the way in, he find he does. We do get a definite answer to that. In fact, it actually comes when he uh, returns to, like, um, to Tokyo with um Naru and it's like in tow, um. Well, because well, I mean, there's no real, there's no real good reason for her to um, to have come back to Tokyo. But at the same time, though, it's kind of like she she is effectively a co lead with the series with the series in the sense that, you know, you can't just have, um, have him just like go, go back to Tokyo without her. So, so there, there you go. But, but in the end, it's like, you know, the series does kind of like, it does kind of like want to be about just, you know, Honda, just, you know, just discovering what does he, what he wants to do. And even then, like, there are still some problems with that. Like, you realize that, Hey, you know, he, when he basically says, this is what I'm going to do. And he realizes that, okay, like I'm, and but he's also kind of clueless as to how he's going to going to go about doing it. I mean, yes, he's got like the appreciation of the uh, people on the island, but he's also still kind of he's still he's still like clueless um, Honda Kun as well. So, but and in the end, it's like you know, he's it's going to require both um, his like like some some support from like from Naru from his from his friend Kawafuji, it's like and the other and the other islanders in order to make it happen, like. Basically, by the uh, by the end of the series, Honda really does feel kind of like like an 
it's like an ingrained part of the island. I mean, well, the, uh, it's like, it's like, I mean, like, well, there are some, well, the series tries to, like, um, drive some tension from, from, ha- from that from the question of like, is he like, uh, stay here? Well, by the end of the series, it kind of like, the answer kind of is, yeah. It's like, in fact, like, the, the uh, last couple of volumes really do a great job of, sh- of illustrating the fact that, you know, Honda has acclimated so much to being part of the island that, you know, it's like that he's kind of like his own character. He's own, uh, there as well. I mean, he's no longer just like the, uh, in, I mean, he is like his character of being like the city slicker, like um, adjusting to America, to like island life is um, it's like, like that's, that's just part of who he is on the island. It's like, and it's just like everyone accepts him for that. When I mean, like, in like the next last volume, when like some when two um like uh like aspiring um video like vi- like a video director and like um I like um idol character um show up, you know like there you can just see like how just like how at odds they are with like the island life, but um talking but seeing them interact with Honda, it's like it just feels like you know like they want like. Like they're the they're the city slickers who have wandered into island life, and now they're relying on like the one guy who has acclimated to things. It's like in order to in order to get by. I mean, there's also this great um story in the final volume where um it just shows you like a, like an every like a like a day in the life of of Honda of Honda on the island, and it just feels like it just feels completely natural that he's that he's settled in here. I mean, no, this series doesn't have any real like epic stakes to it. It's all just, you know, like just, just, um, small, just small scale, um, like just small scale, like care, like I'm um, character driven stuff, but character driven in the sense that, you know, it's just like, there's no larger stakes and just, you know, like what's going to happen to Honda Kun. Is he going to like find out about his, uh, what he's going to do for, do for the rest of his life. Is he going to like find a, find a direction for himself? And yeah, he does. And it's overall quite good. In fact, I think that the uh, probably one of the better comparisons I can offer in the sense that, you know, even though it's like, like Barakamon does kind of feel very sitcom in parts, it actually man it actually nails the um like a progression of um character much better than um another series that I felt was like very sitcom and that's um Princess Jellyfish. Well I felt that its characters never changed. Like well, they were just basically the same people from beginning to end. Um, Honda, it's like they does feel like he's changed um, from 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 the version of him you see in volume one to the version of him you see in volume eighteen. It's like so, even though it's like you know, like it's like it's it's kind of a form. It, it like Barakaman is kind of like a like a formulaic like story at its core. Um. Yoshino um, does manage to um, like deliver some some nice character progression. It's like and a nice and a nice arc for her protagonist. It's like over over the course of its eighteen volumes. It's like and some good jokes as well because it's also because even though it's, if it's not quite laugh out loud funny for every volume, there are definitely like some good chuckles to be, to be had with each. It's like with each volume, and like it's and like and Honda and the rest of the cast are are gen- generally appealing as well. So. No, this isn't like this isn't kind of like a series that you know it's like it's that that you're gonna read and like just just feel like immediately moved. It's like or just like think it's like you know probably like the best thing like ever. But it's it's superior escape like escapist fiction in the sense that you know like it takes you away to like a uh, take a nice nice unspoiled or rural island. It's like it's like rural island village and lets you live there. It's like for as long as it takes you to read to read these volumes, and you know, I think that's something that's it was something that you could appreciate um, while it was being serialized. But now, now I think that's that's even that's even more more appreciable. Just just to escape just escape this like the hellhole that is 2020, if even for like like for as long as it takes you to read to read these volumes. So, not not like you know like a great work to be sure. But 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 definitely entertaining, charming, and at this point in time we are now, like transportive in the best kind of way. So so yeah, I so I enjoyed this overall. Um, John, um, it's like any thoughts on like your end about this? Well, I think that um, 
it's pretty good. Um, uh, you know, if escapism, escapism, is that what we want to call it? Um, yes. Is, is what you're looking for. I mean, or you could just take a drive in the country, I suppose. Um, I don't know. Maybe go camping. Um, but in this case, for this story here, yeah, sure. I, I think, I think that this works, you know? Um, and, um, yeah, uh, so that, that's about all I really have to say about it. Um, sounds interesting. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, one thing you could do is get this manga and you can go out to the country and read it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can like, buy the physical copies or just download it to your... It's like your Kindle or like or iPad or whatnot. Yeah, the only pesky thing about like downloading things and then having it authenticate when you're in the middle of the country is that sometimes the Wi-Fi signal isn't there. <laughs> well, I mean that's that's why you download it to the it's like to like to the thing instead. That's right. So remember that, everyone. <laughs> download it and then go out to the country. <clears throat> yeah, save a <clears throat> what they call an offline copy, right, everyone? So yes, you'll have to sync up with it. So, yeah, it sounds it sounds very interesting. Um, all right, so what do you have on tap for us next week? Okay, well, assuming everything goes as planned, um, it's like we're gonna have um, it's like uh, my Myron and Rob back to talk about um, like like Viz's new um, Spy X Spy series, which is like could it could be the next um, big big shouldn't jump title, assuming that you know like everyone buys into its um, specialized version vision of um spy culture such as it is all right well that sounds interesting and we'll definitely have some commentary on that and we'll catch you next time on comic picks by the glick all right laters bye